Rob Venn here. It's Friday 13th of December 2019 and we're going to look at the websites of the Daily Mirror and the Times uh, because it's the day after the general election and this will match the newspapers I've asked you to buy so that we can compare them to the set texts for your component one newspaper section so we'll start off with the daily mirror so a few basic things first of all let's have a look at some of the various components that make up a website so up the top of the page here you've got this this is basically what's called your header this is where you'll find all the main controls usually in the top left hand corner you'll find your link to the home page um, in the case of a newspaper website this of course is designed to look like the newspaper's masthead um, in the case of mirror it just says mirror rather than the daily mirror like the newspaper as you can see semiotic um, elements here of course we've got the snowflakes on it because it's the christmas one um, normally up here you will have some kind of navigation and search so this will give you your search bar um, up here we've got links to social media so your external sites obviously Facebook Twitter Pinterest and Instagram this of course relates to the fact nowadays that the Daily Mirror is no longer just a newspaper like any other newspaper, it's a cross-platform brand. It is a newspaper, obviously a website, but also social media as well. This is especially important in today's day and age where fewer and fewer people are buying the print newspapers. And especially in terms of younger people who are probably easy to engage on online or social platforms. So this is where you're going to find your navigation links up here. Now, sometimes you'll have local navigation links coming down the side um, and sort of like banner adverts and stuff. And you might find more of those as we go down. But along here, you've got these tabs, some of which, as you can see, are drop down menus and some of them aren't. This is your main content column. It leaves blanks down the side. Now, obviously, we're looking at this on a 16 to 9 aspect ratio widescreen monitor. Now, some people might still be operating on a 4 to 3 old-fashioned square monitor. So that's why you put the vast majority of your most important stuff in the middle. Of course, you can also have these, um, they will adapt, especially to whatever you're looking at them. So if you're looking on a tablet or a phone, they will change the formatting automatically. But your main content column will come down the bottom middle. You'll have a left scan column down the side and a right scan column down the right. Um, at the bottom, which might be quite hard to find on here, but we'll go all the way down the bottom. Here you go. This is what's called your footer. Um, this will have all sorts of things. Again, it's got your um, your social media navigation, but it has things like you know more corporate things down here. So a link to presumably the home, the Mirror Group website. You've got the Irish equivalent of the Mirror. You've got things like sign up for letters and subscri subscriptions, which of course particularly important this is the tablet edition and then you've got your then print edition um, all sorts of controls like you know cookie notices terms and conditions uh, notifications alerts privacy notices you know corrections and clarifications hidden down the bottom how to complain sell your story uh, how to follow us how to work for us contact us about us these are quite useful um, when you're studying things the pools this is your gambling uh 45 whatever that is um you know so various bits and pieces here that can be useful to you um again 
more navigation links down the bottom. Let's go back to the top home. Right, okay. Now, those are the basic bits and pieces that you're going to have on any website. Obviously, what else have we got on here? Well, if we look at these tabs, as you can see, the first one's you drop down one. This separates the different kinds of news. Now, the ways in which these are organized gives you some idea about the news values of the newspaper or indeed the website in this case. So, if you're looking at news values, one of the theories you can be talking about are those of Galton and Rouge. Now, uh, Johan Galton and Marie Rouge, they're not two of your main theorists that you need to know for the exam, but they're certainly good stretch and challenge ones. They're important media theorists, and I'm quite surprised they're not actually on the main theory list. Um, and they talked about news values so they're talking about what are the the organizational values what are the things that the mirror consider news and how they consider them to be important and there are certain things that galton and Rouge talked about there are things like frequency how often does something happen so you know the news whatever it is whether it be print or tv or radio or whatever they like things that happen in an, in an easy time span. So if things have a, you know, the news has a natural 24-hour cycle. We've got 24-hour rolling news on TV and newspapers come out daily. So things that happen in, in those kind of um, formats are better for the news. And when you're looking at um, long-term social, economic or cultural trends, for example, they tend to be you know, difficult to report on because people get bored of them. Um, you've got threshold. That's the size or significance of an event. So the bigger the event, the more likely it is to get reported upon. Um, you've got issues about unambiguity. How clear and easy this is a story to understand. The more ambiguous it is, the less likely it is to get reported upon. Um, you've got meaningfulness. Stories should be culturally relevant. So you've got this idea of cultural proximity. So the closer something is to Britain, or in the case of Britain, London, the more likely it is to get reported upon. Um, especially you've got this idea of ethnocentricity. The, more, the closer a country is to us ethnically and culturally, not necessarily geographically, the more likely something is to rep be reported upon. Which is why, as you can see, UK news here is the most important one. But it's quickly followed by US news. Because US news is internationally extremely important. And very close to us. Because they're, they're you know, culturally and socially one of the closest countries to us. And they're the one remaining real superpower. You've got continents, in other words, the predictability or desirability of an event. So journalists might go looking for trouble. Um, this, for example, this main story here about these, whoops, I've gone mad, about these anti-Tory, anti-Brexit and pro-Tory, pro-Brexit uh, clashes. As a good example of consonants, this is pretty predictable. We could have seen this coming. So, you know, if a reporter is going to go and report on a demonstration, they'll probably report on the likelihood of it turning violent. Unexpectedness, that's another thing. The unpredictability or rarity of something happening. So, you know... 200 people dying in an air crash is going to get a lot more um, airtime or newspaper column inches than 20,000 people dying of lung cancer. You know, that happens all the time. We're expecting that, but a uh, plane crash is unexpected. Um, everything on here today is going to be perfect examples of the next one, which is continuity, coverage of a long-running story. Well, in this case, we've got, you know, the election, which has been going on for months, but more than that, this, this entire 
Brexit issue. So that's one of the main things, continuity. And um, composition, a mixture of news. So we want all sorts of stuff so it doesn't all get boring. Those are the main things, but there are others. Um, we can look at stuff like reference to elite nations. Obviously, Britain comes first, but then other countries that are close to us, culturally, geographically, ethnically. So the USA, um, ex-Commonwealth countries like Australia, New Zealand, etc. Uh, but then France, Germany, uh, Russia, say Israel or South Africa or other countries like that. Um, other countries only tend to make it in the news if something really dramatic happens, like a war or a really big natural disaster. Then you've got reference to elite persons. That can be politicians, like Boris Johnson, for example, or it can be celebrities. Uh, oh, and of course the royals. That's a big deal, especially in your red top tabloid newspapers. And when it comes to news, we're also going to look at personalization. Events tend to be distilled down into their personalities. So this election was less being reported on as being about Labour versus Conservative, or even about policy against policy. It mainly came down to Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn and whether they were likeable or not. Negativity. This is the big one, really. Bad news is good news, and good news is bad news. Nobody wants to read news, good news because good news is boring. We want new, our news to be entertaining, and to be entertaining it needs to be dramatic, and to be dramatic you need conflict. So bad news is good news. The classic story, of course, that sums all this up is man bites dog. Dog biting a man is not unexpected. That is normal. It happens all the time. But... Man bites dog, it's weird, it's strange, it's unexpected, it's a bit funny, and it gives, you know, a bit of negativity in it as well. So that would be, that's, that's largely considered to be the perfect news story. There are a couple of other ones that are more associated with television, like actuality, so if you've got actual footage of it or photographs of it, it's more likely to get reported. And immediacy is another thing as well. Uh, Philip Schlesinger talked about this in the 1970s. Um, you know, we've got now we've got 24-hour rolling news. You know, you need you know it has to be what the most up-to-date stuff. You know, what's happening right now. So those are some of the things that we can be looking at here. So a couple of things, right? News. UK news obviously comes first, followed by US news. That's your cultural relevance. So that comes down to about the fact that they are elite nations. And it comes down to the fact that it's about um, consonants. You know, they're local. Then the rest of the world comes after that. Then weird news, which might tell you something about the kind of people who read the Daily Mirror. Um, it's salacious, it's weird, it's strange. And, you know, people want that, you know, they want the world to think the world is sick and strange and weird. Then crime... And remember, bad news is good news. Real life stories. You'd like to think that everything in a newspaper is real life stories, really, wouldn't you? But I think by that they mean the lives of ordinary people rather than your elites. Then science. And related to that, health. And then motoring for some reason. Bit of a strange one to be sticking on the end. But, you know, we've got to be thinking about our other main theories here as well so within this we can be thinking about um, George Gerbener and later Larry Gross and their um, mean world syndrome I mean weird news particularly is going to be and crime are definitely going to be coming into this mean world syndrome you know you think the world's a bad place it comes into the drama again doesn't it all right, and it's about cultivation theory. The more and more you see bad news, the more and more you believe it. So, next our tab is politics. Obviously, a big deal at the moment. But then sport, which again gets subdivided. Um, interesting, women in sport quite high up. Good for the Daily Mirror. Um, 
I'm not entirely sure we call WWE sport, but you know, whatever. Um, rugby surprisingly high up as well for uh, you know a working class newspaper. You'd expect that in the middle class ones. Football gets its own category. That's apparently as important as all other sport put together. Then you get celebs. Again, remember references to elite people. So within this, of course, you know, footballers are celebrities too. Um, you know, this again ties in with all of the representation theories. We can be looking at people like David Gauntlet and people like Stuart Hall and how they talked about the fact that the media give us role models that we model our behavior on. Um, and again, we can look at people like... Um, uh, Carl Rogers and his idea of an ideal self, ideal partner. That's where all that comes in. Uh, TV and film. So, you know, they're your culture elements, your entertainment bits. So you're going to get a lot of gossip about what's going on the soaps, the celebrity, and the, like the reality TV shows and something like The Mirror. Because obviously it's aimed at a working class and underclass C2, D, and E social group, according to the PAMCO or National Readership Survey, it used to be called, um, you know, audience demographics. The Royals, again, a big deal. The Royals sell newspapers, um, especially the younger Royals nowadays. In the old days, it used to be Princess Diana, of course. She still sells newspapers. You can find something to talk about with her. But um, obviously, um, William and Kate and Harry and Meghan sell newspapers. Any weird news? Then technology and money and travel. This gives you all the different places you can travel to. Then fashion. Then mums. Um, interesting, not really usually thought of as a female newspaper with a mirror. Then you've got competitions and at the end of it you've got quizzes and got a story. So, what kind of photographs have we got here? Well, as we said, politically, the Mirror is a left-wing newspaper. It supports Labour. So, what we've got here is a story about, even though the Conservatives have overwhelmingly and conclusively won this election, with a, a majority, a huge majority, no less, the biggest majority the you know the conservatives have had since what was it 1954 or something anyway a long time ago um we're starting to see protests already as people are taking to the streets so a no to johnson demo turns nasty with police charging at the standoff between anti-tory and pro-brexit activists yards from downing street just 24 hours after the country backed a Conservative government with a huge majority, trouble has fled in the capital. So being anti-Conservative, the Mirror on their website is starting off with this story. Now, obviously, one of the big differences between a website and a print newspaper is that the website can be constantly updated. Now, newspapers will also be constantly updated throughout the day. You will get at least three editions, a morning and evening and, you know, sort of like a midday division, um, edition. And you can tell which one it is because somewhere, usually on the spine, down the side somewhere, will be through, uh, little dots. If it's one dot, it's the first edition. If it's two dots, it's the second edition. If it's the three dots, it's the third edition. And some newspapers might go on certain days, might go to the fourth or fifth edition, depending what's going on. But this can be constantly updated. So, you know, when we looked at this in class this morning, it had different stories on it obviously but the other advantage of this of course being the internet is it's got video content so you can have multimedia content on a website so multimedia is a good word to be using here as well so if we just open up another tab here you know clashes except that's annoying clashes break out outside parliament as hundreds of protesters send a white hall Whitehall has been closed whilst protests broke out close to the cenotaph with pictures from the scene showing a large police presence. Um, interesting, of course. One of the other things we're looking at here is the reading age that you get on newspapers. 
Now, according to Basil Bernstein, you've got two kinds of language. You've got restricted code and you've got elaborate code. Restricted code is what you'd expect from, say, a six to eight year old. Elaborate code is what you'd expect the reading age of a 13 year old to be. And your tabloid newspapers have got a six to eight year old reading age because the average reading age in this country is nine. So you're not going to get too many big words, but quite interesting, cenotaph is quite a big word for something like the mirror. Um, so obviously, yep, look at this pop-up banners. No, thank you. So we got some video story, which um, could have been shot by journalists, but could easily have been shot by ordinary members of the public and then sent in, possibly for a small fee. Um, again, look at how much of these pages dominated by adverts. Yeah, pop-ups. These are your um, your, uh, your secondary kind of stories. They'd be your kind of news in brief things if we were looking at the front page of a um, a print newspaper, and. You know, they are going to take you to other places. And, you know, we've got more pop-ups. It's going really annoying, aren't they? Um, they're the kind of things you'd be getting, what they call news and brief things. These will take you off onto other video ones. But look at those all celebrities. I'm a celebrity. Yeah. Perfect example, isn't it? So, only a short little story. Yeah, a bit of video. In fact, a lot of video, in fact, on this. Which tells you a lot, you know. They say a picture tells a thousand words, don't they? And, you know, you think with a newspaper in particular, you'd be getting a lot more text, but pictures on the website, don't you? Because, you know, that's the advantage of a website. You can do kind of things like that, which you can't do in a newspaper. Um, I suppose it would be possible to do things like have interactive features in a newspaper, you know, using AR, you know, augmented reality, and using things like um, QR codes and stuff, I suppose. You know, there's no reason why you couldn't do that. I wonder why people don't do it more. But anyway, as I was saying, these are your right scan columns. That's what you call this. Been using brief and print one. But as I said, most of these were probably sent in by members of the public. Right. <clears throat> what other kind of stories we've got here? Um, you know, more personalization here. Missing persons. Bad news, isn't it? Again, uh, this personalization. But most of it's going to be, again, election results. Five election results statistics or stats, you know, shorter words, that might make you even angrier about the Tory win. Again, this is showing the newspaper's bias, which you can do in a newspaper, but you can't do in a TV or radio news. Um, again, here we've got some um, celebrity news. Um, far less um, political news on here than there was earlier when we looked at it. Going back to normal pretty quickly. Especially with weather up to 10 centimetres of snow threatens weekend chill amid fresh flood warnings. Look at this. Again, crime. It's depressing. It's miserable. Because uh, bad news is good news. Um, but again, surprisingly little political news left on you. This is related. Cafe Nero hasn't paid corporation tax for 12 years, skipping a potential 4.4 million bill. Um, you know, this kind of thing is particularly relevant to the election at the moment. Um, again, this is weird news. Yeah, no, go into my home county, says everything. Fight breaks out after two women start rowing at the gravy stand in a Toby Carvery. That's the kind of story that's there specifically to make you laugh. Um, interesting here, advertorial. An advertorial is an advert that looks like a story. Um, it may be written by the... Um, editorial staff of the newspaper but it's done in such a way as it looks like an advert even oh, sorry an article even though it's an advert they by law have to announce it as an advertorial 
Um, so, very quickly, we're going back to large amounts of celebrity news, soap opera stuff. You know, your typical news. It's stunning how quickly they've moved on from the major news story of the day. Now, this could be because they're, you know, their side lost. You know, so, as we can see, very quickly, interesting. You know, again, showing their political bias. Still, a few bits and pieces of stories down here. Um, again, trying their best to ridicule Boris Johnson. Not this difficult. Commentary on the election. But, yeah, surprising how quickly this has all gone back to normal. Um, but still lots of stuff that, you know, here, we saw this was one of the main stories earlier, Paloma Faith vows to be the kindest person as she predicts the end of the NHS, mixing the politics and the celebrities, doing the same down here with Matt Lucas and Lily Allen. And earlier when we were looking on you, they had Stormy on you as well, didn't they? Stormzy on, was on there somewhere. Why is he not on you now, I wonder? We missed him. There he is. Stormzy says it's a dark day for minorities as Tories scoop up a majority. Again, this is trying to relate politics to celebrity, perhaps to engage a younger audience. And then quickly you're on the sport and all the other bits and pieces. So, negative language, words like nasty, no, anti, standoff. All these kind of things are telling us what to think. They're there to manipulate us as this newspaper pushes a particular agenda. So what we want to be thinking are about are the semiotics of it all. Think about Roland Bart. Think about how image and text anchor one another. Again, this is Roland Bart. What are the captions that they've got on pictures, for example? Um, what's this one got to say for itself? Um, how are people being described? Um, this, remember, is an infographic. These are all infographic, yeah? Um, it's all gone mad again. Right, okay. Um, this is interesting. This is what it's like with the first past the post system. That's what it would look like with a proportional representation system. Which is what the... No, we don't want that. Which is what the Liberal Democrats were trying to push for in the last... Ele well, a kind of proportional representation system in the last elections. Um, oh, look, animated graphics. That's quite interesting. An animated infographic. Helps to illustrate things. Interesting use of Twitter. So we've got intertextuality here. Remember Julie Kristeva's concept of intertextuality. So media reporting on other media. Which again, this is interesting as well. Uh, these adverts, you think, are in some way being... Um, sponsored by the mirror you think that they're being approved of by the mirror but they're not they're you know they've they're not got nothing anything to do with this site itself uh so let's have a look at some of the you know, not too many not too much text a lot of pictures a lot of video a lot of infographics which of course works with the format you know, people prefer to watch stuff rather than read stuff online.
But let's have a look at something different. Now, interesting. If I type in the times. And I go to the first thing that pops up. Obviously, what you get is the fact that the Times newspaper is behind a paywall. Right? So, in other words, you have to pay to access their website. So, you can have a, a free trial. There are various subscription options. You can have just print, just digital, student ones, group ones, or you can have all of them. Yeah? And at different prices. So, £26 per month will get you digital subscription subscription right but that's the first thing that pops up if of course you go on to this one which is the actual website itself you will see the home page so again you've got your header both newspaper websites you'll notice have massive banner adverts up the top and you get your cookie things it's annoying this one of course is trying to sell you the news literacy program help your students be critical confident thinkers with a free news literacy program oh, that might be useful i'll have a look at that later um look at how much this website however looks much more like a newspaper and less like a website it's also changed less throughout the day so similar in your header you've not noticeably got a search bar like it did on the mirror you've got a login as indeed the mirror did so you can have you know in this case, it's because you need to if you subscribe to it. Um, subscription options, obviously, right up top. Times Plus. What's the Times Plus? Let's have a look. Um, I don't know. Other things. Rewards and stuff you can get by the looks of it. Right, but up at top, infographic. Right? This is the masthead, which again is going to be your homepage. And it says today's date and 5 p.m. update. So this hasn't been updated in like five hours. Conservative majority, 650 of 650 seats declared. So the final result. And of course, they put it in a nice little rosette there with different colors and different parties. Um, Easy visualization so you can see at a glance where you are. Now, their top story. Now, when it comes to politics, the Times is a center right newspaper, it broadly supports the Conservative Party. Um, it's owned by News Corp, News International. He's owned by Rupert Murdoch. He also owns The Sun. Um, until recently owned 24th, 20th, uh, 20th Century Fox and before he sold it to Disney. Um, and Sky used to own that before he sold it to Comcast. But this is going to be far less emotive than the tabloids. It's going to be far more neutral in its language. Johnson offers rivals an olive branch. PM calls on Remainers to let the healing begin as Corbyn says he will quit. Again, the language used here is not particularly sophisticated. It's not particularly difficult. You know, anyone with a decent reading age will be able to get that. But again, look, video content. But if I try to click on this, it's not going to let us on it, I imagine, without having to pay. Or at least it might only give you the top half of the story. Sometimes what you might find with these things is they'll give you like, um, you know, a, a certain number of articles for nothing and then you have to pay for it. So you might get like five articles a month or something. Yeah. You might get a pop up saying this is the off 
one of your free ones. Nope, see, look, continue reading. So you can't go into any of these unless you pay for it. All right, so you get a pop-up ad down there. Um, again, the language isn't particularly difficult here. There aren't that many big words. Nothing that a, anyone with a daft decent reading age couldn't understand. Um, again, Cummings blames educated Remainer types for poll route. Um, Swinson apolog unapologetic over Brexit stand. So lots of election stuff. Um, again, go now, top Labour figures tell Corbyn, so obviously they don't like him, so they want to get rid of him. Um, defeated beast of Bolsover absent at this election council. And the thing about Dennis Skinner there, who's lost his MP seat in Derbyshire after 59 years, just on the road from me. Um, again, infographics, easier to understand at a glance. This is comment. This is less news. They're not just reporting facts. This is more comment. This is where the newspaper is allowed to put across its message, its ideologies, its beliefs. Um, so Labour moderates as much. Uh, sorry, Labour moderates as much to blame for this route as the zealots. Um, that's quite a big word, zealot for these newspapers um I'll show more gonna show more of yeah so more of this so we're getting a lot more politics stuff um bit about scotland smp landslide heralds battle over independence so <clears throat> that could be seen as being um you know about uh What's the word I'm looking for? Sort of like um, bad news is good news because you can see the breakup of the Britain Union between England and Scotland. Um, it's that pret a manger thing about going on down there again. Um, much more variety in news here. Um, little thing about Greta Thunberg. You know, a genuine hero for once. Um, these little sections look here take us to the different sections of the newspaper a magazine literally the magazine you get every week Sunday review, travel, weekend Saturday review, money, things like that a bit of science more science uh, more yeah, sport but also celebrity celebrity Older readership, so they need, they'll know Pete Townsend is of the Who. Um, TV, obviously, but this is business orientated because it's the BBC uh, um, launching this thing called Britbox with um, ITV and I think Channel Four, which is sort of like a, uh, a competitor to Netflix. It's a you know a one-stop streaming service for um, British. Um, Freeview television. Um, look at these adverts. Literature, Literature Festival at Sea 2020 and the Queen Mary 2. You know, tells you something about the readership we've got going on here, doesn't it? The fact that you can afford to go on, to, on the Queen Mary for a start. Um, again, satirical cartoons. You know, quite front and centre. And then he got into the world news. Obviously, you might have got this further up on a different day. But today is a big day for British news. Business. Obviously, this is going to be more important since the main readers of the Times are going to be your A, B, C ones. So, the more interested in business because that's, you know, they may very well be in business. Um... But still, sport at the bottom, and again, mostly football. Um, interesting here, of course, you've got the obituaries. So, who has died recently? Um, and you'll often get very interesting people, and you read about their very interesting lives and these kind of things. 
Uh, I think you get your puzzles at the bottom, so it's not all doom and gloom. Times 2 is sort of like a newspaper uh, magazine supplement that gives you all your entertainment stuff. That still freaks me out. Look at that, it's Uncanny Valley there. Uh, Professor Masahiro Mori, this idea that things that look human but clearly aren't freak us out, and damn is that freaky. So, ah, bricks and mortar, I was wondering what that is. It's about the housing market, clearly. You know, people who read the Times are usually quite a lot wealthier and can afford to buy their own houses. Yeah. Scotland gets its own section, Ireland gets its own section. Notably, Wales doesn't appear to, not at least not there. And of course, it's Christmas, it gets extra stuff in it. Down the bottom again, you get your footer with all the things we talked about before. It tells you it's regulated by Ipso which is the um, independent regulatory body which regulates the news. So, we need to be thinking about our key theorists. So, obviously, we need to be thinking about the fact that all these newspapers have got on their websites an ideological bias. So, we need to be considering Stuart Hall, what's the hegemonic or the negotiated or the um, the oppositional readings that might be inherent in these articles you want to be thinking about the semiotics you know things like you know little things like the font you know the times newspaper is written in times new roman you know it's a serif font it looks sophisticated it looks classy it looks old-fashioned we can look at the masthead design here, which features the lion of England. Well, it's technically a leopard, but whatever. Over here, we've got the unicorn of Scotland. It's representing the union of England and Scotland. It's got a crown on it, which represents the, you know, the, the royalty. Um, you know, it's got this Latin in the masthead. Don't know what that means. I might Google it later. Yeah, so it makes it look sophisticated compared with the mirrors, which is a simple sans serif bold I mean, font on a red background. And obviously they put the snowflakes on it because it's Christmassy. So we want to be thinking about the semiotics. What are we seeing? What does it mean? Why so much blue? Well, maybe it's because they support conservatives. Right. Um, we want to be thinking about, um, you know, binary opposites. Obviously, you've got your Claude Levi Strauss, you know, Boris Johnson versus Jeremy Corbyn. You want to be thinking conservative versus Labour. You want to be thinking conservative with a small C versus socialist or liberal. Um, that's what you know. Those are the main news stories we've got today. But also things like law versus criminality, for example, um, famous versus ordinary in inverted commas. Um, we've got what else can we look at? Um, the other key theories, things like um, you know your cultivation theories, yeah. The, your a person's political ideologies and outlooks are going to be manipulated by what they read in the newspapers. And when we live in a country where nearly all of our newspapers are right-wing, you're going to get an overwhelmingly right-wing message being delivered to the public. So if the public are constantly seeing right-wing messages, your hypodermic needle theory your two-step flow model, you know, your Harold Laswell for the hypodermic needle, Lazavel and Katz for the two-step flow model, which is where the Stormzy and the Lily Allen comes in, you know, you're more likely to accept a political message if it's coming from somebody who's a celebrity you trust, right? The more you see the same messages repeated, the more you believe them. That's your cultivation theory. That's what you call George Gerbner. The more you see bad news, the more you're likely to believe it. That's where the Gerbner and Gross Mean World Syndrome comes into it. We also need to consider the representations of 
well, not just people, but also political parties, the country as a whole. Um, you want to be thinking about how people like David Gauntlet and you want to be thinking about how people like um, Stuart Hall talk about the fact that we have, uh, we model our identities, we model our personalities, we model our uh, dominant ideologies over what we see in the media. And of course you've got the representation's agenda. You need to be consider who's being represented and how they're being represented. Um, so you want to be thinking about your bell hooks, your Elizabeth Van Zunen, um, your um, Judith Butler, but also, of course, the likes of your um, Laura Mulvey, male gaze, which isn't something that's going to be a major issue in The Times, but might be more of a thing in The Daily Mirror. Um, you know... But also representations of social class. How are people in different social classes being represented? You know, are people who say working class being looked down on? You know? Um, not wishing to be... Well, I am cynical. But if I'm going to be cynical, would this story have been as big a big story um, if this young woman hadn't been attractive? Um, you know, again, hear this Natalie Nunn shares super kinky plans of husband Jacob Payne as they rubbish split claims. Male gaze, sexualization of women. I don't think we're getting an awful lot of that in here, but don't forget, I mean, this isn't one of them, but it wasn't that long ago that. The Sun in particular, but also the other tabloid newspapers would have had a topless woman on page three. Here you go. Coyote Ugly nightclub to pay £70,000 after bar dancers fracture spine and fall on glass. Because um, they fell over on the bar. Because I've seen that coming as a health and safety nightmare. I mean, to be honest. But again, sexualization of women, isn't it? Okay. So, you know, if men are going to be objectified, I haven't got any on you, but if you had some footballer wandering around with a top off, he'd be more active, wouldn't he? Not that really much. Again, you could argue that's a bit of, you know, well, it's not a man washing his hair. You know, at least he's a person of colour. I'll give it that. There's a lot more non-white faces on you than you normally see. Credit where credit's due. Not that there's still that many. But ultimately, the key things you want to be looking at here are institutional. Now, the mirror is owned by Reach PLC. Now, Reach PLC is what used to be called Trinity Media. Uh, Trinity Media obviously um, owned the Daily Mirror, but recently they've just bought some other newspapers. Um, they bought the Daily Star and they bought the Express, both of which are two of the most right-wing newspapers in the country. So people like... Um, you know, your Livingston and Lunt were talking about the fact that um, media ownership is about, um, what was it, Hesmer Gulch? About profit and power. And we tend to think in terms of newspapers are owned by billionaires so that billionaires can manipulate the public discourse. So one argument about this entire you know, the reason why all the newspapers are right-wing is because right-wing parties tend to be very kind to the rich and don't and reduce the amount of tax they pay. So rich people don't want to pay tax, so let's buy a newspaper that's going to persuade people to vote Conservative or Republican or whatever it might be um, against their best interest 
in order to further the interests of the rich. However, if you've got someone like Trinity Media that is only both right-wing and left-wing newspapers, it kind of undermines that argument because what it tells us is they don't really care about the politics. All they want to do is make money by co- you know by covering both ends of the political spectrum. If you're making a newspaper for the left and a newspaper for the right, it's really about making money by manipulating and exploiting both ends of the political spectrum, not trying to push one particular political message. On the other hand, you've got newspapers like The Guardian, which is essentially run, well, was run as a trust, but now as a limited company, but has enshrined into its company rules this ideology of liberal values and progressive values and um, non... Um, you know, they can't be manipulated by commercial or political interests. So they are highly motivated by, in inverted commas, power. Um, whereas other ones are just in it for the money, quite frankly. And the other one's the sun. You know, look at the difference between some sun newspapers. The, you know, the English sun is rabidly pro Tory and the Scottish Sun is the complete opposite. It's totally Labour supporting. Why? Because Scotland's much more left wing. So these are the kind of things you want to be thinking about. You want to be bringing in all of this theory. The other thing we can look at, of course, is stuff like um, um, Clay Shirky and talking about the fact that media is no longer a one way thing a top-down model. It's more of a two-way thing now because we as consumers are able to talk back. This is what we've got up here in social media. Now we can send our own pictures in, things like that. So, these are some of the things that are on today's website. Um... We will obviously be comparing this to the newspapers. So, try to get hold of them. It's a bit late now. It's quarter past ten. But, you should have bought them already. Um, if you haven't got them, um, try and at least... I don't know, I'll, I'll try and scan some of the newspaper stories and give you scan copies. You can always photograph them off your mates or something. Um, or you go and scan them but we will be analysing the newspapers in class so buy them, keep them safe put them in a plastic folder or something because you're going to need them for this year and next year okay right if you've got any questions you know where to find me and I'll talk to you soon